Appendix The Five Kantas These are made up of body, feeling, memory, thought or imagination, and consciousness. It is difficult to appreciate the depth and subtlety of meaning within these five, and in order to give the reader some basis for contemplation, a list of similes is given. These similes were given by the Buddha, and may be found in the section on the Kantas in the Sangyutta Nagaya. The body is likened to a lump of foam floating down the river Ganges. Feeling is likened to the rain falling into a puddle of water, and each raindrop as it falls causes a splash and a bubble which quickly bursts and disappears. Memory is likened to a mirage seen in the desert. It has no substance to it and is mere appearance. Thought and imaginative thinking are like a plantain tree, for if the outer layers of the trunk are peeled off, as one goes inward one comes to no pith or hardwood. Consciousness is likened to a magician who goes to the crossroads and displays all sorts of magical phenomena, but when it is done it all disappears and nothing is left of it. When one talks about the Namakantas, one tends to think of them as being separate things or entities, but in fact they are all aspects of the citta. It is therefore more correct to think in terms of the citta performing the functions of feeling, memory, thought, or consciousness, for all of them are thoroughly dynamic and they are not static entities at all. Memory Sanya It has become popular in many places to translate the word sanya by perception, and this is a wrong translation. It seems probable that this stems from the translations of parts of the Tipertika in the last century and early in this century by scholars who tried to put Buddhist ideas into Western philosophical concepts. The dictionary, the concise Oxford, gives the meaning of perceive as to apprehend with the mind, to observe, to understand, etc., or to apprehend through one of the senses. And for perception it gives the act, the faculty of perceiving, intuitive recognition, and in philosophy, action by which the mind refers its sensations to external object as cause. All of the above definitions involve all of the mental kantas and are complex processes. But in addition, if sanya is not translated as memory, then where is memory in the kantas? Not enough thought has been given to the overwhelming importance of memory. Surely this should be clear to anyone who understands the devastating effect of Alzheimer's disease, in which the memory steadily diminishes until the unfortunate victim has no reference left from past experience and he becomes virtually an imbecile. Throughout Thailand, Sanya is always translated by Guamjum, which just means memory, and this is universally accepted by both scholars and those who practice the ways of meditation. Kantavatta, the groups of duties. The list of these duties is given below, but for a complete coverage of them, one must consult the books and commentaries on the Vinaya Pratika. The relevant duties are to be carried out in the following situations. 1. By a bhikkhu when he visits a monastery or dwelling place. 2. By a resident bhikkhu in a monastery or dwelling place. 3 by a bhikkhu who is leaving a residence. 4. By chanting the thanksgiving after receiving food or other gifts. 5. In a place where food is eaten. 6. During the alms round. 7. By a bhikkhu dwelling in the forest. 8. In the dwelling place, the Seinasana. 9. In the washroom, literally the fire room. 10. In the toilet place or room. 11 by the preceptor for his follower. 12. By a bhikkhu for his preceptor. 13. By a teacher, acharya, for his pupil. 14. By a pupil for his teacher. The ascetic practices, todangas. These are the ascetic practices as listed in the standard textbooks. It must be understood that their purpose in every case is to counteract specific defilements, gilesas. So they are to be applied by each practitioner as and when he finds need for them. 
1. Wearing robes made from rags. 2. Wearing only the three robes and no others. 3. Getting one's food by going on the alms round. Bindabada. 4. Not omitting any house on the alms round. 5. Eating food only once a day at one sitting. 6. Eating only out of the alms bowl. 7. Having eaten food to one's satisfaction, one refuses any further food. 8. Living in the forest. 9. Living under a tree. 10. Living in the open, not at the foot of a tree nor under a roof. 11. Living in a charnel ground. 12. Being satisfied with any bed or resting place that falls to one's lot. 13. The sitter's practice. In other words, sitting, standing, or walking, but never lying down. Sangyojana The Sangyojana are a list of ten factors that bind people to the endless round of birth and death. They are 1. Sakkaya Dirti the belief that there is an entity of self or individuality in the five kantas. 2. Vichikitsa, doubt of a skeptical nature based on delusion. 3. Si labbata para masa, usually translated as attachment to rules and rituals, but many who practice the way of Buddhism are not satisfied with this and feel that it concerns morality more than rules and rituals. 4. Gamaraga, sensuous craving. Although this is a correct translation, amongst those who practice, the main emphasis is on sexual craving and all that proliferates from it. 5. Vyapada, ill will, malevolence. 6. Roparaga, the desire for the exalted states of the Ropa realms. 7. Aroparaga, the desire for the exalted states of the Aropa realms. 8. Mana, conceit. 9. Uttacha, restlessness. 10. Avidda, blind unknowing. These ten factors are overcome progressively by the attainment of the four paths. Thus, the Sotapanna has overcome the first three. The Sakadagami has also reduced the fourth and fifth. The Anagami has overcome the first five factors. The Arhant has overcome all ten factors. The Vinayamukha The Vinayamukha, literally the mouth of the Vinaya, is a set of three books which give a concise and fairly complete explanation of the Vinayapitaka. The Vinayapitaka consists of five large volumes in the Pali text translations, and while it is allowing for inaccuracies the final authority, it is certainly not concise. So for those who want to get an overview of the Vinaya, the Vinaya Mukha offers a useful alternative. The Vinaya Mukha is translated into English and is available from the Mahamakota Buddhist Bookshop opposite Wat Pawarniwes Vihara, Brasumeru Road, Bangkok, Thailand. Aramana the word aramana means a foundation, a support, or that on which something depends. But generally speaking in this book, this something refers to the state of mind and what flows out of it. As a supporting condition for mental states, the aramana may be an externally sensed object or an internal condition arising from feeling, memory, thought, or consciousness. Amongst those who practice the way of Gamartana, the word aramana is often used to refer to an emotional mental state, either good or bad, although to be strictly correct, it should refer to that which arouses or precipitates that state. In the Thai language, the word aramana, pronounced arom, always means the emotions, and sometimes in this book it also means the emotions. <laughs> 